Hi. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> Yay, we're back for Art Stream. Let me show you first what we're gonna make. And because this camera is the biggest, I'll just lay it out. So this is what we are making tonight. We are gonna do basic macrame. Um, and the best part about this uh, is that you can do exactly what I'm doing or you can go off the cuff and do whatever you want to or you can do this project and then get used to like the knots and everything and then just cut it off and take it off and do another project and that's like that's the super cool part um, about this is that uh, these things are easily reusable and you just cut the yarn off or if you're using the cord. Um, I, I chose yarn just because I like the look of the yarn better. These guys, I wish they were a little longer. I didn't cut my yarn long enough. Um, but I, li I like the look of the, of the yarn better for something like this. Uh, but I wanted to start on a hoop because it's easy. It gives you a good base. You get to learn a lot of basic knots, but then you can take this and easily go and do something else. Macrame is actually extremely easy if you understand the basic knots. And if you've ever made like a hemp necklace or a friendship necklace or a friendship bracelet, you basically know how to macrame. You just don't realize it yet. Um, this is the size of the hoop that I told you guys to get. And I think it's a 10 inch hoop. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use a bigger one tonight because I want it to be easier to show you guys what to do. You can also use um, embroidery hoops if you want to instead. Uh, but I will be telling you the measurements for a 10 inch hoop, but I think this is like a 14 inch one. For those of you that did not see on Instagram, these are your supplies. You need a metal hoop of some kind. They're between a dollar to five dollars at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, any kind of craft store, or you can use an embroidery hoop as well. Basically any kind of circular hoop. And then you need some kind of yarn or cord. Uh, traditional macrame is done with cotton cord. You can get that at the craft store. You can also easily just pick it up at like Lowe's or Home Depot for way cheaper. Um, or you can use yarn. I love using nice thick texture yarn. You wanna make sure that it's thick uh, versus thin, so that way you can see, get the chunkiness of um, macrame, which is which is very key to it being a macrame versus just um, just string. Uh, if you do have regular standard size yarn, then that is okay. It's just going to look different. You're probably going to have to do more uh, knots than what we're going to be doing potentially. Otherwise, it's just going to be really small. So keep that in mind. Do a cord um, or do a thick yarn, almost like rope. Just imagine like small rope, thick yarn, small rope, cord, all the same thing. Those are the only two supplies that you need. Um, other things that are helpful, scissors, tape measure, masking tape or painter's tape helps out a lot too. All right, so the three knots that we're gonna be learning is a lark's head knot, and that's the, the knot that goes up on top. And then we're gonna be wearing doing square knots, which is all of these ones here. And then it is a, a diagonal double half hitch knot, is this right here. So a double half hitch or a half hitch knot. And then we're gonna do it twice. And it, it's on a diagonal. So those are the three that we're going to, uh, going to be learning. But to make it easy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you the square knot off the hoop, um, just to make it a little easier. And then once we get to the hoop, I'll go through it very slowly again. But I want you guys just to be able to watch and see how it's done. So that way when you hear me saying the words, you kind of already have a visual, so you're not having to constantly like look up, look up and everything. Sorry for leftover cough, just ahead of time. So I'm gonna teach you a square knot. Again, if you've ever made a friendship bracelet, a hemp necklace, anything like that, that's all I did throughout junior high and high school. You've done this before, you just probably didn't realize that's, that's what it is called. But it starts with four strands. And what you're gonna do is you're going to put two strands in the center and one strand on either side. And then the best way to think about this is you are going to make the number four. 
with your left strand going underneath your middle and over your right. So here is your, your four. And then you're gonna take your right strand and you're gonna go over and through. And then tighten a knot. Now you guys don't need to do this at all. I'm just showing you so that way, again, when you hear me talking about it, you kind of already have a visual to start with. So that's one half of your square knot. The next step is you're going to make a P doing the same thing, but the other direction. So this time you're gonna take your right strand and you're gonna go under the middle, over the left, here is your P. And then you're gonna take your left and go over the middle and through the loop. And then you tighten it. Now, when you do macrame, you don't wanna tighten um, your strands super tight. The, the point is to keep it really chunky and loose, but not, but not super loose. So if you ever have any issues, your best bet is just to take your center strands and just pull them tight, and that kind of will pull your knots tight. Um, just a real quick side note, if for any of your uh, ones that you want to do, if you want to make it spiral, then you only make fours the whole entire way. So you don't, you would just go under, over, over, through, and then start on the same side, under, over, over, through, and eventually it's already, as you can see, it's already starting to, to spiral. Eventually it would just spiral all the way around. If you wanted to go the other way, you would just make peas. Just throwing that out there if you really wanted to do that. All right, so with your yarn, I need you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need you to measure out 10 lengths of yarn. You want to make 10 pieces that are eight feet long. Um, so the best bet is I'm going to measure two feet at a time times five. And you're going to do this 10 times if you have a 10 inch hoop. And then your easiest thing to do is to just measure by using the strand that you already measured up. Ten eight foot long pieces of yarn. It definitely does not look like they're even. <laughs> Hold up. Something surely went wrong. <laughs> what? what in the world? What did I mess up? It's 100% fine because we trim it in the end. Just your neighborhood pro crafter here. <laughs> Whatever, I give up. All right, does everybody have their 10 pieces of roughly eight foot long pieces of yarn? So what we're gonna do is we have our strands and I want you just to lay them across your lap and we are gonna be doing the lark's head knot first. And that's what this little loop-de-loop -loop knot is. I didn't have to give you guys the official names, but I just wanted to. So lark's head knot is what we're gonna be doing first. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your strands and you're going to fold them in half. So take your loose ends, fold them in half, and you're going to lay your loop underneath ow, your hoop. And then you're going to pull your tails through the loop and down. If you did not get that, that is fine because I'm going to do it again. Uh, you're going to do it to all 10 strands. But I will show you again. You're going to take your loop. I like to throw it forward. You're going to lay it underneath your hoop. 
You're gonna take your tails and you're gonna pull them through the loop. And remember, don't pull your knots too tight because you want that chunkiness. You don't want it super loose like this because that just doesn't just doesn't look good. Um, but you also don't want it tight like that. You want it just nice, nice and in, in the middle, just right. You want to be baby bear, just right. So this is uh, what you should have so far. Biggest suggestion is if you have where the metal is connected together right here or a tag that you couldn't 100% get off, slide all these guys on top of that right now. <laughs> So next thing that we need to do is we need to roughly spread our knots out. So I'm going to basically, the top little pizza slice here, I'm going to spread my knots out a little bit. And I like to do just about like a finger's space between them. All right, got to sit on both feet because this is where it gets intense. <laughs> And make sure all your cord, yarn, whatever, is laying nice and flat. <laughs> all right, so what we're gonna do is I need you to take four strands, and we're gonna start on the left side, and take the rest of the strands and just flap them over there, because we don't care about them right now. And then we're going to start our square knot. So if you remember, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your middle two strands and you're gonna group them together, just like that. And then you're gonna make a four by going under the center and over the right side. And then take the right side and go over the center and through the loop. The easiest way to tighten is to always pull on your center strands Tighten your side. Pull on your center strands, tighten your side. So that is one half of a, of a square knot. <laughs> this time you're gonna take your right strand and you're gonna make a P, the letter P, by going under your center strands and over your left. So here is your letter P. Give you guys a second to do that. So you're gonna take your right strand and go under your center strands and over your left strand. And then you will take your left strand and go over your center strands and through the P. And tighten it up. That is one square knot. So in my head, I always say four, under, over, over, through. And then I say P, under, over, over, through. And that pause between there is switching your threads. Woo, we got it? Okay, now you're gonna take those four strands, toss them to the side. Grab your next four strands, or two knots. And guess what, we're gonna do the same thing. <laughs> so we're gonna make a four by going under, over, here is your four, and then over through. And you want your knot to be roughly straight across with the one that you just made. I'm gonna bring mine down a little bit. And then you're gonna make a P. So say P, under, over, over, through. Um, then next, go on to the next one. You're gonna do this for the whole row. So we're going to make a four by going under, over, over, through. And then we're gonna make a P. You think about too thi thick of string, but I'm sticking with it, okay. You're gonna make a P by going under, over, over, through. 
and then tighten it up. The biggest thing is to make sure your center strands stay flat. You don't want them getting twisted at all. <laughs> My cat is flipping out between it with all the yarn. <laughs> She's like, what is this? So here is where your first steps should be. I always like to go through then and still just slightly adjust my strands as I'm going. We're gonna do the same thing over and over and over and over again. But this time, we're gonna get rid of the outer two strands. So just move those out of the way. Wait, you're gonna get rid of the outer two strands. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second on either side <laughs> and then you're going to do it again so now you're going to be using two strands from your first square knot and two strands from your second square knot does that make sense i hope because i stumbled over that and then we're going to make another square knot so we're basically connecting the square knots so we're going to make a four under over over through and then make a P under over over through and then again you don't want it to be super tight you want to have a little gap spacing in between between there then you'll take the next four strands do the same thing I'm on knot three. We're gonna make our four under over, over through. And then you're gonna make your P under over, over through. Move on to the next one. And this is where you should be after your second row. So you should have two loose guys and one, two, three, four knots and two loose guys. All right, so the next step, we had two strands hanging out last time. We're gonna take the next two strands and hang them out. Now you have four strands out on the side and you will end up making three knots. All right, and here's where you should be on row three. Your knot should all roughly be the same row, like same level. <laughs> so on your fourth row, you guessed that you're gonna get rid of two, four, four strands, six strands on either side. Get rid of them, two, four, six strands. So now you're gonna be making two knots. All right, so I personally, pers personally, personally, personally have all of my triangle done. So this is the hardest knot, just throwing that out there. Once you get it going, it's super simple, but to make sure that it is working, it just sucks. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you. It is called the double half hitch knot. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna, we're gonna start on the right side, just because in my head that's that's the side that I wanna start on. You're gonna take your last strand, and you're gonna lay it at a diagonal along the edge of your triangle. And then you're going to take the second strand and watch me before you try it. You're going to take the second strand and you're going to bring it underneath and through the loop and pull up. And you want to have, so I have like a little bit of a, of a gap between here. 
Yours can be super tight to it if you want to. I'm gonna do a little bit of a gap. This diagonal strand does not move. I almost say just hold it in your hand because it's gonna be your diagonal strand for the whole entire time. Then you're gonna bring your strand that you just looped with back down and you're gonna bring it underneath again and wrap it over and pull up. You can see those little knots right there. So once we got that first, so that's one half hitch knot. We're gonna do it again. So you're gonna bring your strand that you just did your loop-de-loop -loop with, you're gonna bring it back down underneath. So you're just basically gonna kind of flip your knot, knot over. So that way it's back down underneath again. And then you're gonna do the same thing. So you, it's underneath, you're gonna bring it over the top of your diagonal, through the hole, and pull up. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see exactly, but there's two little loops right here. Let me know when you get that. And I like to keep it about a finger spacing. The best part is if it doesn't turn out 100%, it still looks purposeful. <laughs> so now you're gonna take the next strand and you're gonna do the same thing all the way until the center. So you can see that I have my mine split down the center. This side and this side, you're gonna do the same exact thing. So same, same exact thing. <laughs> so you're gonna go, it's underneath your diagonal. You're gonna bring it over the top of your diagonal, through the hole, pull it up. Bring the strand back down, reposition it so it's underneath again. Over the top of your diagonal, through the hole, and pull up. These ones are especially important to not do super tight. And then you're gonna throw that, that strand up. We're done with that strand. And again, make sure you're not tightening it too tight because that's how you can lose your knot. And then once you do it twice, toss your strand up, move on to the next one. For those of you guys that are still going, go all the way to the, so you have two left in the center. Once, once you get this knot going, you're like, why was this so difficult in the first place? Why could my brain not figure this out? So you're gonna go all the way down to the center. So your diagonal strand is the one that's hanging. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So, left side. You're gonna lay your outermost strand in a diagonal. All the way down your triangle. You're gonna take your next strand and bring it under, up and over. Drop the tail through the hole. Pull it on up. Cello, this is not gonna work, bro. Bring that strand back down so it's underneath again. Bring it up and over through the hole, and again, you should only, you might be a little harder on doing this with your left hand if you're not left-handed, but you shouldn't have to actually let go of your diagonal strand. And then pull it up. I see you eyeing it, Cello. <laughs> For the second one, we're gonna take it, it's underneath our diagonal, we're gonna bring it up and over through the loop. harder for me on my left side. That's why I always start with the right, so I feel confident with the knot before I, I start again. Bring it back underneath. Over and through the loop. And we're gonna do it twice for each one. Um, and you're gonna tie these together in a half hitch knot to complete the point of the triangle. So you're literally just going to 
tie a knot. <laughs> the end. Tie a knot. <laughs> you're, you're done. I personally like to tie twice though. All right, and we should be here. So your two strands that were in the middle, I just tied a, a double knot. You can stop here if you want to, or you can move on to the next part. Last but not least, we're doing that same exact damn knot. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is I always like to start in the center and we're gonna tie all of our guys to the, the end edges of the hoop here. So I like to start in the center so that way I know that my I'm centered with this top knot here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend our hoop is our diagonal knot. So you're going to bring it underneath your hoop. It's just easy to just put all your yarn underneath your hoop. Okay, so everyone's yarn underneath their hoop. So I'm gonna take one of my center two strands. I'm gonna start on the right side and work my way up and then left side work my way up. And you are going to make a double half hitch knot again. So this is, your hoop is your diagonal strand now. So you're just gonna bring it over and through. And then bring it over. So, this is how I did it. Is I just looped it, whoop, 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 looped it, and then I brought it to the other side, and then I'm gonna put it through the loop. Does that make sense? No, so we're gonna do it again. First strand, you're going to, let's say on the right side of your yarn, you're gonna bring it, just loop it around your hoop on the right side of your yarn. And then you're going to bring your tail over to the left side of your yarn. So you see I have this little hole right here. That's where you're gonna go and bring it up and over and drop your tail through the little hole. And then tighten it up. And you're gonna do that all the way up. The loop de loop. Do you're super loose, they're not really knotting at all. So the first loop is just kind of a loop. The second one is where you get your knot. So when you bring that uh, strand over to the left side, you're kind of, you're bringing it behind your diagonal piece that's coming down. So I just took it, it's right here, it's on the right side right now. I just take it and just kind of bring it over. So I almost make like the top of a pretzel a little bit. And then I just take my tail, wrap it around, but I'm putting it inside this little, this little loop. Definitely nicer than your art teacher. This stream is fulfilling my dream of, one, of being an art teacher. I hope you are feeling accomplished making this. That you learn something new. I feel like Mr. Rogers right now, but I just become a such a happy art mama when we do these, and I see everybody's pictures afterwards. I don't think anything's gonna be as successful as the acrylic pour. Like I started out with just an absolutely amazing one to teach everybody. <laughs> um, I don't like so I don't know. What other kind of things are you are you guys looking for? Are we looking for more paint stuff? Are we looking, do we like doing um, the thread type stuff like this? So far that's pretty much all we've done is paint and thread. <laughs> I'm just going through and adjusting, tightening my little knots here when I get them where I want them to go. Um, or you can just leave it here like this if you want to. Um, I cut mine at a diagonal. So what I did is I just laid down my hoop. I laid everything flat. 
I figured out how long I wanted it to be and then I just took a piece of tape and just taped a diamond. You could do it at a one diagonal across. You could keep it uneven. I kind of just want to leave it organic. Just, just hang it. But instead of a diamond, I'm going to do mine at a diagonal. So I'm going to slide mine all up here. I want to keep it longer though. So I'm going to find my shortest strand. Kind of work from there. So these two are my shortest strands. I'm just going to take some painter's tape. You can do masking tape. I'm going to make it kind of dramatic. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut right above our tape. Perfect, easy cleanup. Um, to make a hanger for it, you're gonna find your center and you're gonna do another lark's head knot. And just pull up and then tie a knot. And here she is. What do we think of the diagonal? Is that, is that cool? Yes, if you guys end up doing this tonight or anytime in the future, please tag me on Twitter or Instagram um, so I can see them. It's like my favorite thing in the whole entire world is to see all of your guys' creations. So how about we, we'll do something for April. Maybe we'll do like bath bombs in April and we'll do like a lip scrub or something like that um, or face scrub in May. And then there'll be good Mother's Day presents. So April and May will be focused on gifting. May 12th, okay, so maybe April. <laughs> so April, April will be some kind of self-care, spoiling yourself. I don't really like self-care. Cause I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not into that millennial term, but <laughs> it will be some kind of pampering, uh, item that you can easily make for yourself, but also gift to somebody else. So we will, we'll do that. A beauty stream. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll, we'll get little jars. And the best part is, is we can upcycle a ton of things. Like I'm going to end up reusing jars that I already have. You have baby food jars. You can use those easily. Um, any kind of, if you have like a pasta sauce jar, that's shorter or like a salsa jar that's shorter. In, in the next month, save that. That's going to be the point. The point is going to be that we are not going to go out and buy jars. We're going to use stuff that we already have. So that is what we're going to do. Okay. So save some jars, fine glass jars, plastic jars, whatever you can try to save a couple of them. So that way you guys don't have to go out and buy them. Cause the point of this is always to make awesome things. Um, but on the cheap, cause we don't always want to spend our money. I don't either. <laughs> Look, I'm just finishing yes. up. Yes, 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 yes. Are you feeling the burn? Oh my gosh. Look at it. Up. It is fantastic. Do you like it? Yes, 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 yes. Can I get some yes in the chat? Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. The technique is on point, sweetheart. Yes. <laughs> He's, he's stuck as Derek. <laughs> How do you spell Derek? D-E-R-R-I-C-K. It's got a little bit of dick in it. Okay, okay. It does have a little bit of a dick in it. It's just got okay. a little bit of dick in there. Uh, we were just talking about what we're doing next month. Do you want to know? Come sit in. Yes. Yes, I do. Just tell me. Well, Mother's Day is in May. Right? Yes. And it's at the beginning of May, so... Uh -huh. 
I'm not going to attempt uh-huh. to do it in the month of May. Yes. So we're going to do like yes. sugar scrubs and like bath salts. and. <laughs> yes. That's yes. What, wait, bath salts. I've been, I've done that before. That's <laughs> it's a crazy Florida trip. Oh my gosh. I ate a man's face. It was crazy. Hi. Yes. Sorry. I love you. I love you. But anyways, I was just telling everybody um, for the next few weeks to keep track of like jars that they have. So if they have like a... A salsa jar, and they okay. empty it out. Then they can rinse it out and wash it, and then they can use that after taking the label off, as to put like their sugar scrub and stuff in that, and then they can gift it to their mommies. Is this a hint that I should be picking up? Also, can I kill that dog and turn it into shoes? Um, no and no. <laughs> I'll just get it back inside. Then she's screaming outside. All right, um, we're gonna go hang out, and oh god, he's broken. <laughs> Um, have a good night, everybody. Remember, my stream deck is making me mad today, so here is an empty wall for a few minutes. We're gonna go host somebody, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Yes, 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 yes.